Welcome to ZCast, everyone. I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here at the Cribble booth at Black Hat 2025 in Las Vegas. I'm with Ed Bailey, field CISO for Cribble. Uh, Ed, this is your first time on with me. We were supposed to talk a little while ago, but I missed you. Uh, so a quick bio on yourself, but then also what Cribble does. Yeah, so my, my title at Cribble is field CISO, and that involves helping customers for you know good advice, architecture, based on my long experience with Cribble, and also keeping our salespeople, salespeople you know, straight in line. Yeah. So it's been a lot of fun. So I was Cribble's second customer back in 2018. Yeah, it's amazing, yeah. customer two. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so Clint was my sales rep, which, yeah, I, feel, yeah. I, which I find hilarious. Yeah, that is funny. So uh, we're here at Black Hat, uh, I would say, if there was a theme for Black Hat 2024, it was AI. If there's a theme for Black Hat 2025, it's agentic AI, right? And um, you guys, of course, have played in the observability and data space. Uh, talk about the connection, the role that you think observability is going to play in uh, agentic AI, and, and really AI in general. Well, and so in. This is a very nuanced conversation. Yeah. I think it was, let's separate this from a, the idea of AI versus observability. Observability is about getting insights into your data. So it's not just saying, you know, here's your data, look at your data. The idea that I'm going to use AI to find what's interesting about your data and try to automate that process. And that's the idea where agentic AI is now help facilitate getting observability faster and better. Because that's, that's ultimately the end of the day, that's what customers want. Yeah. Now, um, uh, I, I do think uh, agentic though, uh, in fact, I read somewhere that uh, over 50% of customers don't actually even know what AI is running on in their enterprise. I suspect the number is actually higher. Right. People yes. think they know. Uh, but what? What? Uh, how do you think observability helps with that? Like, it's, it's obvious, but I guess. Uh, well, it's, yeah. so the idea is that the observability can help you find yeah. where it is running. Because I think it's a, from a from a risk understanding. You need to know what's there. You need to have an understanding of what's there. Because the thing that bothers me the most about AI is the idea that I'm going to take automatic detections without the customer knowing it based upon what? And I think it's very important to understand that. And also I think from a security perspective, data leaks are an enormous issue. I, you know, AI is looking at your data, developing patterns, and so is it using an external, external LLM that opens up all sorts of potential third party risk. So you always have to balance the risk versus the reward, but it has to start with where is my AI, how are we using it, what are we doing with it, and you're right, there's a real governance issue there. Yeah, and, uh, mm -hmm. and so when you talk to customers, um, where are their heads at with AI? Like, I, everyone seems to be moving forward with it, but do you think this lack of understanding is going to create almost like, um, I don't want to use the Gartner term, but a, the trough of disillusionment maybe where well, we see a pullback? Well, I, I think there already is. There is. Now, marketing has been flogging AI for, for way too long and way too much. And this is something at Cribble we always talk about human in the loop AI, that we yes. want AI to be useful. Yeah. The idea, and then accuracy is such an issue. From an observability and security side, you cannot afford 80% accuracy. You need 95, 98, 98% accuracy. We feel the only way to do that is to carefully involve the human with the AI in order to have the interaction to say, the AI is, I'm going to do this. The human validates and says, yes, you know what, that looks good. But so that way the AI is not taking action without the permission of the human. Yeah, well, that's, I think mm -hmm. the, the, we could have a whole fascinating discussion about yeah. the actions that AI are going to take on behalf of people right. and how the derivative effect of that with multi-agent. Uh, I did want to talk to you about, you just announced something called Cribble Guard. Yes, uh, that's an expansion of, yeah. our AI, of, our, of, our, of our AI infrastructure. Yeah, and so and talk so, about your AI, but then what Cribble Guard adds on top of that. Right, so the foundational product is called Cribble Copilot. And the idea is that Cribble Copilot is going to be the one place you go to ask questions about your data. Help me do this. Create a pipeline for me that does this. Find, do a search for me that does this. I mean, so we have it embedded everywhere. And the idea is it's a helper function. How do we make our human users better, easier with less training? And then Cribble Guard stands on top of that. Where Cribble Guard is the idea that it's a sensitive data scanner. And this is so the enterprise is, do I have PII in my data? You know, where is it going? Where is it coming from? Those are all issues that most enterprises really struggle with. And, and here's the biggest thing. So it's one thing to write regexes so that I, you know, I know what the shape of my PI looks like. But for most enterprises, they don't know all the edge cases. And when you have every, um, every development team writing data differently, then so you can have your social security number expressed in a lot of different ways. And so this is where AI is using, that we're scanning the data, looking for potential matches, and then that way we can then build up a library for you. So now your data is going through your library, it's constantly being expanded with suggestions, so now it's going to be more effective. So it seems like the potential use cases for Cribble Guard are pretty broad. It's very broad. Yeah. And the thing is, it's not just sensitive data, it's any kind of data that you're concerned about from a regulatory, uh, regulatory standpoint. GDPR, HIPAA, you name it. Have you seen, um, uh, 
a few use cases that might be like the low hanging fruit of CryptoGuard, the, some that tend to dominate. You know, given the universe that you have, are there some that tend to be more? The, the two most common is so sen sensitive regulated data, so that's either going to be in Hitler, PCI, yeah. and then GDPR. Okay. Privacy so about being able to just find that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, what do I have? Find it, alert me. And, it, and it's very meaningful. So I worked at a very highly regulated consumer business, and being able to find our PII was a huge issue. Because, for example, prior to Cribble, that data would leak into my systems of analysis, and then someone would find it, and then we would have to comb through these and, and delete the data, which was non-trivial. You have these systems of analysis designed not to delete data. And so by having, and it took a lot of time, so by having Cribble in place, this was very early on, yeah. we were able to detect the shapes we knew about, and then we were able to stop the process, and that, that cut down our cleanup work by 99%. And so, so not only a risk issue, but also an engineering time issue. And so that was really powerful. And that's the idea with Cribble Guard, make it more effective and make it easier. Oh, that's where, where you're just saying, you're telling the AI, I want you to do this, this, and this, and it doesn't work for you. And then what about Cribble Copilot? How are customers using that? But so, this, so this is the idea that that's the foundational aspect that yeah. drives everything else. So Copilot is that one place to say, yo, what does this error message do? How do I do this? Now, we've just released another feature called Cribble Copilot Editor. And so what that does is you say, hey, I have a Palo log, I want to map this data to OCFS. So it'll walk you through a five minute routine to build you a, a, a pipeline that now maps your standard data to OCFS with the correct library and everything. And so it's, because it, otherwise that could be, for someone who really knows Cribble, that could be days of work. For yes. someone who doesn't know Cribble, it could be weeks Months of work. work. Right. right. Yeah. And so we're, we're expanding into other schemas because every platform has a schema to be optimal. So we're starting with the OCFS, we're going to quickly proceed into UDM and then ECS and SIM as well. To, this, to me, this is the classic case too of everyone's afraid that AI is going to take their job, but really it's something that's going to help you do your job better. Right, yeah, and, this, yeah. and this is the thing I see over and over again, that it's, you, know, you say, hey, we can replace your tier one people, and I would say in a lot of cases you can't. Yeah. So what's important to me is, as a business leader, I would want to say, help, use my AI to help make my tier one people more consistent yeah. and level up their skill set and help give them a senior perspective without having to have a senior person there. And so how do we make our people better? To me, that's what, that's what our focus is with, with Cribble AI. Yeah, to me, this is, uh, you wouldn't hire an accountant that doesn't know how to use Excel. Exactly. And you're yeah. not going to hire a security ops person that doesn't know how to use AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, and I think it's like, make, use AI to make, make, make your people yeah. better, more productive. Yeah. All right, well, let's wrap this up then with a call to action. Yes. Uh, people watching this are going to get home from Black Hat. They're going to hear about Agentic AI and their enterprise. Um, the, the, obviously, the security team is going to be, oh my God, we can't do this, right? But right. I think security teams right. need to be the department of yes now. Right. So, uh, a few pieces of advice on how they should proceed with it to make sure that the, their employees can use it, but they're not putting their organizations at risk. Absolutely. So, the first thing to do is find out, does your enterprise have an AI governance board? We're seeing this happen all the time where the idea is that we want to have understanding, so you basically have to ask permission. And so if you have an AI governance board, then please contact your rep and ask them for the documentation, attestations from Cribble about how Cribble uses AI, uses their data. Then their, their sales rep could then supply them with that information so they can then apply for approval through the AI governance board. So then they can officially turn Copilot on. Okay. Uh, well, that's a, that's a good piece of advice. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, from my perspective, it's really figure out what you're using. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and that's and, a huge issue. Asset well, and identity yeah. is, is everywhere. Yeah, well, and that's a harder problem to solve either also yeah. because I was talking to somebody about that this morning that most of the apps today just have it built into it. Right. So you might think we're only using you know, 10, 20 different AI applications, yeah. but no, when in fact more. every application's got it built into it now. So you can't run from it. Right. The better thing is to- Understand uh, and, it, yeah. learn to live with it, and govern it. Yeah, yeah. All right, and uh, uh, unless you want to, we are here at Black Hat. Anything here surprise you, catch your eye? Uh, it's pretty much what I expected. A yeah. lot of marketing, a lot of AI, yay, yeah, so yeah. a lot of that. But I yeah. think it's good to see a lot of the new vendors. I'm always, I, I always cheer for innovation. Yes. So it's great to see all the new vendors and who are just really pushing everyone to do better. Yeah, I'll tell you something. As a person that's been covering security a long time, I'm always surprised when I come to the show how many companies I've never heard of before. Yes, so that's it's good impressive. To see too, so. anyway, all right. it, it takes guts to start a company, all so right, I Ed, appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to add? Uh, no, so I right. appreciate it. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you. We, we, always enjoy, we always enjoy your help, and so thank yeah. you. So I'm Matthew, Ed Bailey, Field CISO yes. for Cribble. You can find him on cribble.com. Yes. Um, Z is Caraval from ZK Research, and thanks for watching. Uh, give us a like, hit that subscribe, and I'll see you next time on the next episode of Zcast.